Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this episode of Chanmas, I'm going to be telling you all about my favorite things for the month of November. Super excited to be doing this video. I love doing favorites videos over here on my vlog channel, getting to share with you the things that I have been loving in a bunch of different categories. I meant to film this video in October. It just kind of fell to the wayside. A lot of the things that I'm going to be mentioning in this video have been favorites since October or even before that. And I'm just, yeah, I'm excited to share them all with you. Some of these are like really cozy favorites too. And I think um, some of these would probably make good gifts going into the holiday uh, season. I'm not going to be filming like a gift guide video. I feel like there are so many of those out there, but hopefully this can kind of serve as an informal gift guide as well. So I'll leave timestamps in the description as well. So you can skip around to the different categories um, for things that like, you know, interest you. So first up, we're going to do skincare and beauty. I feel like I have so many favorites this time around because I'm finally starting to experiment with my skincare again. I have been into skincare since middle school. I've been wearing sunscreen daily since I was 16. I'm so careful with my skin. And I will say my approach has always been very less is more. My skin type is super, super dry and I'm also also pretty acne prone. So I want to make sure that my skin is both hydrated and also not getting acne, which is kind of challenging. It seems like those things can be diametrically opposed sometimes. You know, you don't want to like put a bunch of grease on your skin because then you'll get closed whiteheads, that sort of thing. But my standard of skincare, the, the things that I've been using over the years have really just been moisturizer and cleanser. And those two things are great. Those are like the base of my routine. But as I age, I really want to do more for my skin. Also notice that my skin has started to change as I age. I'm not necessarily looking to have like, you know, the most line-free, um, perfect skin ever. I just think that's like not totally attainable for me and like the genetics of my skin, but I want to do what I can to make my skin feel really nice and also look good under makeup. So I've started incorporating a couple of new things into my routine. Some of these I've been using for multiple months and they have really changed the game. So the first thing, probably the biggest game changer for me, and it is the Naturium Retin Aldehyde Serum. I've talked about it a couple of times in videos. I've been so eager to try a retinol or tretinoin or just something in that family of, you know, <laughs> vitamin A derivatives, but I have not been able to because I have been trying to conceive. And now that I have kind of put that on the back burner, I'm finally willing to try some of these products without fear of having to go through like a purge period and then, you know, like immediately get pregnant and have to stop. This retinaldehyde is so phenomenal. From my understanding, a retinaldehyde is like somewhere in between a tretinoin and a retinol, like an over-the-counter retinol. It's less steps, I guess, to get the vitamin A into your skin than a retinol, but is maybe a little bit less potent and a little bit less irritating than a tretinoin. This product, the 0 0.05 formulation specifically, has been so game-changing for my skin. I started out using this product at night every other day and I noticed immediately that some of the dryness I was having on my chin disappeared within a couple of days and it had been plaguing me for a while. It was really starting to irritate me. All my makeup was just clinging to this like one dry patch of skin on my chin. I couldn't get rid of it with glycolic, with like thick moisturizers, occlusives. It didn't matter. The only thing that really got rid of it was that retinaldehyde and I have not had any purging. I'm really happy to say with this product. It truly is as gentle as uh, Susan Yara, the founder of Naturium, says. Like I'm able to use this now daily and not have any irritation. Every once in a while, if I use this product and I was like blowing my nose a lot, let's say, I'll get a little bit of a stinging sensation around my nose, um, but I feel like that would happen with certain skin products anyway if you're like, if you've got raw skin going on. So this product has been such a game changer. I think the biggest thing I've noticed is texture change in my skin. I feel like I deal with a decent amount of like dryness and kind of bumpiness and a little bit of dullness. That is kind of what this product has done for me. I wouldn't say I'm noticing like a reduction of fine lines or like really lump skin with this product. I'm hoping that that comes like the more that I use it, but I really have noticed a big texture difference in my skin. And at this point, I'm not going back. I love this. I have no desire to try tretinoin at this point either. I just love how quick it is to pick this up and get into it, again, without any of those adverse side effects. God, like reading people's accounts of starting tretinoin is just wild to me. Like I do not want to deal with like painful cystic zits or like flaking skin just to eventually maybe have the opportunity to have better skin. It's just not worth it to me. This product is worth it. And it's like fairly affordable. I want to say it's in like the $25 range. There's a lot of Naturium products on this list. Spoiler. After trying that, I was like, shit, I, I really like Naturium. So the next product that I have been loving a little bit more recently, I started this product, I would say about a month ago, is the multi-peptide serum from Naturium. This I layer over top of the retinaldehyde. And this product is what has been giving me, I feel like, a plumpness to my skin. I feel like after I take my makeup off with cleanser, I'm just noticing like my skin just feels bouncier. It feels juicier than it normally does with this product. It has kind of a thin lotion-y texture and it just 
pairs really well with pretty much anything. I think if you're looking for like an extra boost to your moisturizer in the wintertime, this is really, really nice for that reason. It's not like overly hydrating, but again, that bounce is amazing. And peptides are really good for um, collagen production, I believe. They're kind of reducing the, the look of fine lines. I haven't noticed that, but um, I really do like this product. This is one that I wouldn't say is like the most necessary. The retinaldehyde, I'm like never gonna stop using. This is just like a nice bonus additional product um, that I've loved incorporating into my routine, especially for the dry winter months. So next up is my body wash that I have been adoring. This I've been using for, I don't know how many months I'm almost done with like the pretty big bottle. It's the Bioma body wash. I think it's like a hydrating body wash. It's one of those products that I, I purchased kind of on a whim. I had been using a ton of different Naturium ones um, and had used up a couple and I was like, I wanna try something different. This I love because of the way it smells and the way it performs. There's something about the smell that is a little bit classic soap smell, but also a little bit more sophisticated than that. It's got kind of a spa-like quality. And the first time I smelled it, I wasn't sure if I liked it, but the more that I use it, the more that it just smells perfect to me, like kind of clean and refreshing and kind of unique. I really do. You have to smell this in person, I think. I don't think it's a blind buy sort of um, item there, but I do. I really like it. But sealed the deal for me as this being like a new fave is the fact that every time I use this and get out of the shower or bath, my skin doesn't feel tight or dry. It's not overly oily. It doesn't have um, any like film on your skin after you are done using it. it. Just does the job of getting you clean without a lot of like fuss. You know what I mean? It doesn't like strip your skin. It doesn't do anything crazy. It's just a good body wash. I think it has some like nourishing ingredients in it as well. Bioma does a really good job at like doing that with their um, products for your face and for your body, but I love this body wash. I'll definitely be repurchasing it once I run out. Another product that I'm also loving from Naturium, God, I sound like a shill or like I'm sponsored. I promise I'm not. I'm just like so into their products. I feel like they're effective and a pretty decent price point and you can get them at Target. So anyway, the Naturium Livid Body Moisturizer is another product that is not super fancy. There's no bells and whistles involved, but this is really great if you are someone who suffers from like eczema, psoriasis, psoriasis, KP, you just want something that isn't going to irritate those conditions and it's going to moisturize your skin without leaving your skin feeling greasy. This is awesome. I love the packaging. It comes in a big, big bottle with a big pump on it. It's just what I want from a moisturizer. Uh, before this, I was using like a, a salicylic acid body moisturizer to try to attack my KP. And I think this moisturizer is actually doing a better job, even though it doesn't have the same active ingredients. I don't think the Centurion moisturizer actually has any active ingredients, but it just does such a good job with my skin. Just a good standard moisturizer. Nothing fancy, no bells and whistles, but like, very, very solid. Next, moving into kind of more makeup-y items, I have two. The first one is the Sephora Lip Liner in the shade The Nudist. I love this line of lip liners. I think they're probably my favorite, and if they had more colors that appealed to me, I'd probably get every single one, because the texture is just phenomenal. I've kind of sworn by Sinker Suede for a while. The Nudist, I think I might like even more, though. It is a kind of, like, cool-toned, nudie shade that I think is so beautiful on pale skin. What I'm wearing today with my kind of, like, pinky lip combo, the Sinker Suede lip liner looks pretty pretty similar, but I think pulls a lot more pink. This pulls a lot more kind of like cool, grazy nude, and I think it works with so many different lip color shades. It's like kind of my new go-to. I am obsessed. Both of them kind of live in my purse, and it just depends on what purse I grab that day because I, I love these lip liners. Such a, such a lovely formulation. They're not super dry, but they don't come off of the lips super easy either. I feel like the lasting power is pretty great, so swear by these. They're amazing. And then the other makeup product that I have been just loving wearing it today is the Westman Atelier contour stick in the shade Biscuit. I've been wanting to try this product for months. I've talked to y'all about wanting to try it, and I got the little mini sample size at my Sephora, which hallelujah, I was so glad that they have the small one. I love this product. It has really changed the game for me. As a pale girl, I swear by a bronzing product. I love being pale. I don't really have any desire to tan or to fake tan, but I do want to add a little bit of shape back to my face after applying a foundation that kind of like whites out my, my skin. That's kind of the struggle of being pale, right? Like you, you don't have as many natural shadows and contours on your face because, um, we have such pale, pale skin. So for me, I want to add a little bit of shadow to the lightness to kind of bring back life to my face. I will say it's kind of hard to find the perfect shade for a contour slash bronzer product for me. Things tend to go either really muddy or really orange, and I think the Biscuit shade is the perfect kind of cool toned bronzer shade. Like, I can use it around the perimeter of my face without it looking super cool and muddy, but I can also use it a little bit as a contour um, in the hollows of my cheeks. It blends beautifully with, like, a stiff synthetic brush. I love this stuff. I love it. And they have 
have a few different shades as well. I wish the shade range was a little bit better, but if you're a pale girl specifically, I really, really love this stuff. And the reason I wanted to try this in the first place, by the way, is I was using a powder product for a while and it just was not playing very well with some of the more rich sunscreens and foundations that I've been applying. It kind of like got patchy and just didn't look as nice. It's the Hourglass Bronzer. I love the shade of that one, but again, just with the other products I'm using, it doesn't pair quite as well. And this creamy product just is a dream. So love that. And the last product I have in this category is a sunscreen. I'm still on the hunt, I would say, for a new everyday sunscreen. I realized recently, sadly, that the Beauty of Josen sunscreen has been breaking me out. I don't think it's technically fungal acne safe, and that is the kind of acne that I get. You know, just little closed comedone whitehead sort of situations. Um, that's that's my acne. I don't get a lot of cysts, just a little, bunch of little whiteheads. I'm on the hunt for a new, like, everyday sunscreen, but if you're looking for a really fantastic high coverage sunscreen that you can wear outdoors in humidity, perhaps on, like, a Disney vacation, I'd really recommend the La Roche Posay SPF 100. I want to say it's called like sun milk or something. I'll insert a picture right here. Obviously, all the links are in the description, but this is a very traditional American sunscreen that just goes really well under foundation. I wanted to try something that had really, really high coverage that would really layer well under foundation, and this is that. It's not fancy. It doesn't have a lot of like cosmetic elegance, I would say. It's not thin, but it's not as greasy as a lot of just traditional American sunscreens, so I really liked this. I think it's fairly easy to find, which is nice, especially with like those new regulations that are coming out, kind of trying to curb the sale of certain sunscreens in America. This one you can easily get on Amazon or at Target, and uh, it's nothing fancy. Like I said, it's not like an everyday wear for me, but I keep it on deck in case I need to go for a walk outside. I'm going to be working in the garden. If I'm going to Disney, like this is the sunscreen that I'm going to be pulling out for those circumstances. And again, it does go pretty well under foundation. I wouldn't use it under a super emollient foundation, but something with like a satin or matte finish on top of this, perfection. Like works so, so well. So that is my sunscreen pick. All right, now moving into the home category. Both of the things in this category are like a little bit random, but are things that I just adore and have been using very consistently. One of which is my bedding. So the Belgian Flax Linen Duvet Cover from Pottery Barn is a game changer, especially if you have pets. And I wanted to mention it because we just switched our bedding from using our quilt, which we use in the summer, to again, like a duvet insert with the duvet cover for the winter time. And I was just reminded of how beautiful this cover is, how well it holds up to pets, and how long we've had this. We've had this cover since before we moved into this house, almost lived in this house for five years. That might not sound particularly impressive to you, but when you have pets, especially cats who like claw things up, being able to hold on to something, it get better with time and not look ratty is like kind of an accomplishment. So this duvet cover, I won't say is like impervious to scratch damage. When you look at the texture of it and the way that it wears over time, it gets kind of like nubby and soft and lived in and you don't really notice any like snags or, you know, damage to the material. I also don't have like any rips or tears in it even after this long of like having it with cats. I just love this and I think that if you were to invest in like quality bedding, I would highly recommend the Belgian Flax line. I love the quilt. That's also held up really well. Love the duvet cover also held up really well and we have the matching um, insert that goes with it. I think it's like the classic down insert to go in it. It's also held up incredibly well to pet stains. I cannot tell you how many times we've had to get pet stains out of this. You know, a cat will just hop up on my bed and, and throw up. I, I wanted to mention it because I feel like investing in good bedding is something that, you know, if you can do it, I think is, is worth it sometimes. I remember saving for this and feeling kind of stupid buying it. And now I'm like so grateful to my past self for like, you know, investing that money into this bedding because like actually has held up really, really well. Still on the hunt for high quality sheets. I've tried a few different, you know, sets over the years that have not held up quite as well. But that Belgian flax linen duvet cover, man, it is worth every penny, I have to say. So next is my laundry combo. I've been on the hunt for a laundry fragrance combo for a while, something that feels, I don't know, both fresh and also unique. I don't know if this is like really the most unique combo, but this is one that I landed on and I really like it. It is the Persil Advanced Clean. It has like an orange um, sticker on the front of it mixed with the April Fresh Downy Beads. I'm in love with this combo. It is fresh in sort of a baby sort of way, like a clean Johnson & Johnson baby soap sort of way, and I love it. Not in like a baby powder baby kind of way, but like a Johnson's baby soap sort of way, plus clean laundry and like that April Fresh set. It's just so good. I'm loving this combination, and I'm also very curious if you would let me know in the comments down below what your favorite combination is. Is anyone else really into like laundry fragrance? I know that 
you know, it's not great for like sensitive skin. It hasn't bothered my skin personally though. And just, I like my laundry to smell really, really nice <laughs> when I'm done. So this has been my combo lately. Really, really like it. Um, and I think I'm going to keep repurchasing like this particular combo because it's been hitting. I also got like the jumbo size of the April Fresh beads at Costco. So it'll be a while uh, until I can try something new, but I have really been liking this. That's it for home. Let's move into the fitness and fashion category, shall we? Uh, first up, AirPods 4. I hate including an expensive tech product, but I do think the AirPods 4 are kind of worth it. My AirPods 2 were on their last leg in terms of like charge, and I really wanted something that had the active noise cancellation for when I go to the gym. I've been relying on my like over the ear AirPods Maxes at the gym. I've had for a while as well. They're kind of again on their last leg with the charge, but I don't always love um, sweating in those. It's like not the most pleasant and they're kind of heavy. They kind of slide off sometimes when I'm like sitting on a bench doing things. These are really great. They don't stay in my ears quite as well as AirPods 2, but the AirPods 4, I love the active noise cancellation. The charge is great. I also love that case itself kind of makes noise. So if you ever need to find them, you can. They also have like tracking in them, you know, so you can put like them on Find My. It's a nice upgrade. I think that it's something that um, would be good to ask for for Christmas. I love them. I think they're fantastic. Next would be this pack of Apple Watch Bands. Kind of a random one, but I bought this Apple Watch Band a few months ago and I have been totally in love with it. It's kind of similar to the one that comes with the Apple Watch, but it's a lot thinner profile. I think it's a little daintier, a little cuter. It just, it blends in kind of with my skin. In, so it's like not as obtrusive. Love it. But I found that you can buy like a five pack of different colors for the same price as this one colored band. I bought them for my Disney trip so I could like switch out my colors and I've been doing it ever since. It's fantastic. I love that they are so inexpensive and it's just a, a fun way to jazz up your outfit. Just switch out the color of your Apple Watch band. I'm sure a lot of y'all do that as well. I hadn't really seen multi-packs of these rubber ones until recently. Um, and that's on me. I'm sure they've always existed, but swear by them. We'll link them in the description, obviously. Next, pair of socks. I think I included socks in my last um, favorites video as well, but these ones, I was really surprised by the quality um, of them. I was looking for some crew socks that had a little bit more length. Uh, I have some Hue crew socks that I got on Amazon, again, that I've shared in other favorites video, and I would say the rise of the socks goes about to here. You don't get a good scrunch, which is fine. Like sometimes I want a scrunch, sometimes I don't. Lately I've been wanting a scrunch, especially as like cold weather comes. I think it looks really nice, like kind of pulled up over leggings, you know, very like 80s style. Bought a four pack from Hanes and these are surprisingly nice socks. I have some like more expensive socks for walking and running. Oh, I can't even remember the name of them, but I'll link them in the description. They're very cushy, really nice. Um, I got them at Fleet Feet and now me and Hayden are both addicted to these socks. These remind me of those in, in terms of the cushion and how they wash and wear. They have like a band that goes around the foot to keep them kind of snug to your foot. But again, like the the thickness of the sock, the way that it, it wears, it's lovely. I brought these to Disney. I did not get any blisters, even though I wore new sneakers every day. I, I brought two new pairs of sneakers that I hadn't worn before. Uh, my feet were not cut up. These socks are incredible. I think they looked super cute, super comfy. Price was great. Quality's great. Would recommend. Moving on to two jewelry items. Again, these were for my Disney trip. I say for my Disney trip, like I got them for certain outfits, but I've been wearing them since then. I was actually wearing one of these pieces yesterday. First up is this like a bubble balloon initial necklace. It comes on like a Saturn chain, like a beaded gold chain. And I feel like I've seen these necklaces kind of pop up all over the place at different boutiques, bobble bar, at stores like that. They're all kind of the same. I think they all come from the same like dropship manufacturer. And I've seen them priced at like $70 for not real gold. I found this for like nine or $10 on Amazon. The quality is pretty great. Again, I wore it at Disney. I was sweating and it hasn't tarnished or changed colors. And I'm sure eventually it will because it isn't solid gold, but so far so good. Like it's held up pretty well. The weight of the C, the, the initial has been really nice. It hangs really beautifully. I love pairing it with other um, necklaces. And I will say the like adjustable length of it is pretty great too. So you can, again, really get like a customized um, look. That is one thing I do like about cheaper jewelry compared to fine jewelry. Fine jewelry doesn't give you like, you know, like the multi option on like what uh, little clasp you can put your necklace on, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't adjust the link quite as readily. So fantastic necklace, so fun, so on trend. And I think it's a nice way to like get into a trend without having to like spend a ton of money. Another um, fun way to hop on a trend is these bow earrings that I wore so much in Disney. I loved these. They were so secure. I love, like I wore these on some like crazy roller coasters and they did not come off. And I love the look of them. Again, a great way to get into a trend without spending a ton of money. I saw these being sold on Amazon for like a couple of different listings at different prices. Bought the cheapest listing at like eight or nine dollars. And the the way that they kind of come together and click in at the back. Um, it's kind of like a huggy style with again, like a dangling bow. They were so secure. They were so secure. Hard to get off actually at, at some points um, and looked really cute with a bunch of different things. Also something I will point out about these earrings compared to the necklace that I feel like the gold looks a little bit more real on the earrings. So if you like pair it with like solid gold pieces, you know, fine jewelry or even like plated jewelry, it's going to look 
a little bit more authentic, if that makes sense. Like they're a little bit more of a real gold than the initial necklace. That one's a little bit more yellow, not so much that it looks silly, but like something to note. Lastly, let's talk about books. First, in the books category, it's not a book, it is a Kindle. Cannot get enough of my new Kindle Paperwhite. I don't think that this is something you need to like rush and go upgrade to. A few people have asked me that and my answer to that is like absolutely not. If your Kindle works and holds a charge, you don't need the new Kindle. Like, I don't think the like new additions and improvements are like so great that you need a new one, but if your Kindle is like on its last leg, if the battery life is super shitty, if you don't currently have a Kindle, I really would recommend the new Kindle Paperwhite. They're beautiful. I picked this over the Kindle Colorsoft because I just don't really ever read things in color. I don't read graphic novels. I feel like the technology that I saw on display too didn't seem as crisp as I wanted. Like the display itself was just like not as crisp. Paperwhite's amazing. I've been carrying it around everywhere. I love how lightweight it is. Uh, before this, I had the Kindle Oasis, which had the buttons, which I loved, but it was a little heavier. The battery life was going and it's just, it's a worthy upgrade, I think, if you're like on the hunt. And I have the hot pink one, which I love. I love a good color. Lastly, book pick, like an actual book, would be a novella, actually, an audio novella, To Can Play by Allie Hazelwood. This was a five-star novella for me. If you like Allie Hazelwood and you like her brand of hero, you're going to really enjoy the story. I think it's perfect for this time of year as well. It's about people who work at rival video game studios and the studios have to come together to put together a game following a beloved book series or based on a beloved book series. And the hero and heroine already kind of have an antagonistic relationship, which they work on at this snowy winter retreat. So again, perfect for the holiday season. I don't know, it just hit really, really hard, even though it wasn't very long. I think it's like not much of an investment um, in terms of time, but I think you're going to have a really good time with this one. So that is it for me. Those are my favorites for the month of November and just beyond. I think, again, a lot of these products I've loved since October um, or even before October. But um, yeah, that's it for me. Let me know in the comments down below answers to the questions that I asked throughout the video. I think there were a couple of things that I was like, let me know if you like have a good solution for this. But um, also let me know what your favorites were this month in whatever category you choose. Something that changed your life. I'd love to know. I love y'all so much and I'll see you in the next one.